Here comes the boom. Here comes the boom. Here comes the boom. Here comes the boom. Hey, what is good, Boom Crew? It's your girl Annie Boom Fanny, and this is just a random chit chat uh, video. I don't know when's the last time I recorded about his window. <coughs> I'm smoking some strawberry hookah. Hold on, because I got to clear the... Um... Uh, it's my water. Room temperature. Ooh, you see all that dust? Sorry. Had to uh, shake the coal off. Yeah, so I'm smoking strawberry hookah. I have some water, room temperature. Um, making sure I get my water intake throughout the day. I have my laptop because I'm working right now. Um, I'm using my mobile um, hotspot from my phone actually. Um, yeah, our daughter is behind the scene. That's the camera woman. And this video is just random. I'm just be talking my shit. Oh, I wanted to show y'all. Um, I didn't get. I'm lying. I got most of this stuff recently, but I've been obtaining stuff like over a period of time because I wanted to show you like the try on haul that I got. I, I made sure that I saved and then I saved and then I bought that stuff. I don't want y'all to think well, quite, not to be rude, quite frankly, I don't give a fuck, but I, I don't necessarily want y'all to think that I'm just splurging and buying a whole bunch of stuff and being reckless with my money during a time like this because I'm not, um, essentially... I had gotten extra, not extra money, but I, I got some money that I wasn't expecting. And I told myself that I was going to give myself um, some stuff. I caught a lot of this stuff on sale, like the Fashion Nova sale, they had 80% off. The sneakers I buy is not expensive at all. Like these, um, I don't necessarily like them. I liked them when they was online, but now that I see them in person, I don't really like them. I'm sorry for all the noise, y'all. With this quarantine business, for some reason recently, you, I've been hearing a lot of sirens, police sirens, firefighters. There's a lot of the crime rate, I'm assuming, has increased or I don't know what's going on. People are going fucking crazy. It's, it's a lot more kitchen fires because people are home cooking. It's it's, it's it's a lot going on right now. So I'm a size 7 in men. Um, 7 in men or 7 in kids, it depends um, on which brand. I saw these online and I really liked them and then I got them today in person and I, I wasn't too crazy about them. My nail broke if you're wondering. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I just, I don't know. They out of my comfort zone. So I'm gonna just wear them. Pretty sure they gonna look good on me regardless. Yeah, I paid $45 like I said. So <clears throat> I'm not out here bowling out of control. 45. These are Adidas. And then I got these Reeboks. For like 50 some odd dollars, I think. So that's not bad, y'all. These are size 7 as well. <clears throat> Reeboks and Adidas, they tend to have a lot of sales, good sales at least. Sales that make a difference because Nike give you 25% off a sneaker that's $200 and you're like, nigga, that don't make no fucking difference. Um, yeah, and then that big box that I had during the fashion overhaul, <clears throat> these were some of the shoes that were inside. So I got me these. It's a hexagon block heel, basically. I'm a size 10 in women's shoes. I'm a size 9 in, in women's sneakers, but I, I buy a size 10 in women's shoes. 
um, just to make sure that my healing like hanging off the back a little bit. That's the bottom of them. They're really comfortable. I put them on. I ain't wearing these no time soon because y'all know what's going on in the world today. Um, I don't know what those are called. Tan block heels. Bitch. Are you dumb? <laughs> if this is not Annie, I don't know what it is. <laughs> It's tie-dye, rainbow, shiny. I mean, this is me. When they made this shoe, they called me and confirmed whether I would like it or not. <laughs> I'm lying, but this is me. This is all me, boo-boo. Real mira mira-ish, okay? That's a size 10 as well. Those fit. Those are really comfortable because they're not necessarily stiletto because the bottom comes out so you feel really stable in them. <clears throat> these are the quilted block uh short heel these are comfortable from what i have observed so far what i experienced so far i've walked around in the house with them on um, but you know it's different once you get outside and you're on the concrete or you're standing for a long period of time so i'm hoping that these uh actually um continue to be comfortable throughout the night when i do get a chance to wear them but like i said a size 10 your shoes. Um, and the reason why I racked up on these shoes is because I tend not to be able to find my size. These were all inexpensive shoes. Um, very inexpensive. And then, so I got me a tan, a red, and then a black. So I wanted to make sure that I, I got the basic colors. Um, and then these, this is the black pair. Um, but this is from Cape Robin. This is not uh, the same brand as the red pair. The red pair I like a little bit more because the, the, the quilted part is a little bit more chunky. But these are sexy as fuck when I put these on. My feet ain't done. I would have put these on and modeled these for y'all. So them weird ass foot fetish niggas could be up in my videos. <laughs> but um, my feet looking like... No, 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 no. Alicia Dragon. So anyway... This is a random ass video, y'all. I just wanted to sit here and vibe out with y'all. I ain't got no cases for my job. Hold on. Okay. Um if you say so. Always something new. I can't complain, I got a job, so I'm not even going um I'm not even gonna say anything about this damn email. Um, yeah, so today I'm making chicken cutlet. I don't know how I'm gonna make it, but I'm gonna make it. I'm over everything. My mood is a little off because I'm getting my period. <sighs> and you know how you just be in your head? And this has nothing to do with my period. I'm just in my head about certain things. And it's starting to get to the point where starting the show um so yeah i don't know <clears throat> i don't know y'all my phone i had no idea that the back of it because i have the galaxy s 10 plus and i had dropped it a couple of times but it had a case on it it's, it was a bullshit case but instead of me taking a case off to make sure that the back didn't crack i would pick it up and be like okay i'm good because the front didn't crack but there's cracks in the corner of this fucking phone, y'all. And it's, it's blowing mine. It's really blowing mine. Um, not only did I get the shoes um, in those clothes, um, I made sure that I got a, a printer. Um, so that way my son, if he needs to print out anything 
for school or anything um it's convenient for him to have the printer and also it'll be convenient for me because i want to start putting labels and having my soaps ship out and look a little bit more professional right now i've just been wrapping them and sending them in regular um yellow envelopes so i've ordered a lot of stuff for my business um i have ordered a scale i've ordered ingredients like i said i ordered the printer um the super I should bust him in the back of the head um what else what else did I order y'all I don't know but yesterday um me and Mr. Crush we went to the butcher and the butcher has package packets packages Basically, you, you look at a menu and there's different uh, packages you can get. And we ended up getting a package that came, that was originally $50, but we ended up getting extra stuff. So it came to like 80 some odd dollars, which wasn't bad. Um, but he made sure that he, he um, paid for it because what I've been doing is I've been making sure that I cook, number one, for me. When my son is here, of course, he has to eat. And then I've been making sure that I cook for him because... I don't necessarily want him going out to these places eating and then he got to come back to me and he's exposing himself to unnecessary, um, you know, communication with people. So I got a whole bunch of meats, but I need to get more. Um, I've been watching this lady online. Her name is Debbie, but her YouTube channel is The Jamaican Journey, I believe it is. The Jamaican Journey. And she's authentic home chef, but her shit is top of the line. Like, her shit is real, real, real Jamaican food. So, I've been trying to get myself in the mode of um, getting outside of my comfort zone. And I'm going to start making, like, um, curry gold and a real Jamaican oxtail and stuff like that. So, I've been watching her stuff. And basically... I, I do need to get more oxtail. I do need to get more gold. But I need to go also to the supermarket and get this long list that I have. Damn, it's not in my pocket no more. I hope I ain't going to drop it because that list is important. Um, of all the seasonings that I need, all the stuff that I need. Because I did big, big shopping, but now I'm starting to run low. And it's not easy to just go to the supermarket and just get it like that. You got to stand online. They only letting a, a certain amount of people in, um, you know. So you got to stand on the line and basically they let the first 20 people in and then once a person leaves out, you can go in, however it works. Um, it ain't easy to grocery shop no more, y'all. Y'all know that. Y'all know the vibe. Um, I cannot find antibacterial uh, liquid soap anywhere. Um, so I've been using the Dow antibacterial bar soaps, um, which is just as effective, but it's, it's kind of a pain in the ass to have to keep touching that so you know um what else smell like somebody smoking weed i worked out of my house uh yesterday i have another one of these this is five pounds and then i have the resistance bands I have the app uh, roller thing. I got a, uh, I got a rope. I got some stuff in here that I could uh, do my thing. So I'm not too worried about that. I had stopped working out completely because of all of this that's going on. So I told myself I just need to really put in the effort to work out from my house. Yeah. Uh, my best friend is out in Delaware I think she's been there for a minute she was here for that little get together that I had um, when I had um, my friends here smoking hookah um, and then that's been it we just everybody has just been separated as we should um, staying in the house so now my job is saying that I have to do a screenshot in the morning of my screen and in the afternoon of my screen um just to ensure productivity making sure that we online and doing whatever we got to do uh which is understandable um 
I guess I, I don't feel that it's necessarily necessary because if we're doing our cases or doing whatever we're supposed to do, that should show you that we're being productive. It's not like the work is sitting there piling up. So, you know, whatever. But, you know, people got to find shit to fucking do. Is that a crackhead? Oh, my God, y'all. What's going on? The shit I see. So, what else can I say? What else can I tell y'all about? Right now, I'm starving, but I'm not in the mood for my own cooking. I want some outside food. <laughs> and that's wild to say. I want some outside food. Okay? It, it, you'd be surprised the shit you miss when you can't get it. Or when you can't do it. I got used to... Nobody likes riding a crowded train. But you know you get used to your New York routine. You get used to just people being outside. It buzzing when it get hot outside. Everybody's out. People chilling. You don't realize that that's your norm and that's what you're used to. And, and, and how much life that brings you in a sense of that's just your life. So when something is this dramatically different, it can be extremely depressing. Now, I'm not depressed, but... I can't imagine going on like this for another two months, three months. That is what's going to bring even people who have a strong mindset down a little bit. Because this is cool for now because it's just like, okay, I understand the safety purposes. But to have to limit your contact with other human beings to this extent is going to take a toll on people. Because that's what we do as humans. We communicate, we socialize, you know. Is that the welfare lady? I think that's the welfare lady. Welfare center right up the block for me. <laughs> I don't mean shit because I don't qualify, but you know, it's there. I talked all that shit about not wanting to work and look at me. I'm so grateful that I took this job. I'm so grateful that I have this job. I'm so grateful that I have an income, a decent income coming in. Um, I cannot wait till I have two consecutive years of um, employment where that would further qualify me for a new apartment because my apartment is extremely small. If it was just me here, then it would be fine. But being that it's me and my son, I want my son to have his own room because right now I have two couches that flatten out and turn into a bed and have storage underneath it. Um, and I'm always in my room. I make sure I give my son his privacy. Um, when he's not here, that's usually when Mr. Crush will come over. Or oh, I sneak Mr. Crush in at night. <laughs> um, so. Yeah. Let me reply to this email because I, I was annoyed, but let me reply. I have to be professional. Oh. So, I don't know if I told y'all, but this job disqualified me initially. And I had to go through fucking hoops of fire to um, show them that I, I'm capable of doing a job. Had to go through hoops of fire. And I'm lucky that I did that because honestly speaking, I used to complain and I used to, even in my in my other videos, they had, it was real, uh, uh, I, I want to say a negative vibe, but I don't want to use the word negative because I feel like negative is intentional. Some people don't know that they're being depressing or Debbie Downer. You understand what I'm saying? Some people just think that that's normal to to complain or to always have this low energy or low vibrational way of thinking. So, um, what was my point? 
I, oh yeah, I always used to say, why me and why this is happening? And y'all used to see me on here. And so I even have my days nowadays. But I realized, and there's been points of time throughout my life that I came to this realization, but how quickly we forget when things are not going our way, right? So I realized, especially now, with all of this that's going on, that the universe never, ever, ever allows me to be to the point where... I'm unable to do for myself completely where I'm in an extremely fucked up situation and I'm completely asked out. And the, the crazy thing is that there's people who allow themselves to get to that point in life, you know? There's people that allow themselves to get to that point in life. And I noticed that even when things are not going my way, during the time that it's not going my way and I'm trying to make it go my way, them small little steps that I take, later on um only benefits me because i did all of that to make sure i got this job but there was a point in time where i was in my head like well fuck it if, if they gonna disqualify me fuck it whatever whatever but luckily i didn't do that because now look at what's going on and now i'm able to work from home i'm able to work from home and i'm able to do what i i, I do for myself to keep a peace of mind so there goes that Do I have anything else I want to talk about? Oh, somebody has made a comment. I know who the somebody is. And it's no ill feelings towards her. I mean, the, the comment was shady. But it's no ill feelings towards her. I just think that sometimes some people who are subscribed to me or continuously watch my videos find that I have a personality that's so down to earth that they feel like they really, truly, deeply know me and they can just say whatever. And people who really, truly, deeply know me know that they can't even say whatever to me. So I'm not sure why people would feel that they could do that virtually. Because <laughs> you can't. Um, but anyway, that comes with it because I'm putting a certain amount of my business and life out there. So it's up for interpretation. Whatever. But um, somebody has said something about marriage. And I never, as far as I'm concerned, on my channel, expressed how I feel about marriage or whether I would ever want to be married. People don't necessarily know my belief system. I don't make it a point to speak on it because I'm not in the mood to be sitting here being uh, insulted because I don't believe in what you believe in when it comes to religion or spirituality, or race or whatever. So I don't necessarily get into depth about stuff like that about um, how to raise a child. I'll, I'll get into that here and there, but I, I try not to get, I don't make full on topics and videos about that, so to speak. Also marriage, I don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm a very passionate person and I can be very direct and some people can find it very insulting. So I try not to do it, not because of y'all, but I try to do it because I, the feedback that I would get on it, I don't feel that I, I have the personality that uh, I even want to deal with that. I feel how I feel. And it's not that my mind can't be changed or I can't be changed as a person. But in this current state, I am who I am and I feel how I feel and I'm doing what the fuck I'm doing. So that's why I don't make, uh, you know, how can I say, um, controversial videos like that. You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't see me talk about celebrities and hot topics and all of that. I just be on some chill, chill shit. It's enough people doing it. Um, but my perspective on marriage is this. I would love to be married. I would love to be married. But the only reason why I'm very hesitant on that or I don't bring that up in any relationship that I'm in because I like to see, find out, who people are in their most vulnerable state, in their most angry state or whatever it is, because I need to know whether that's that's something I can accept for the rest of my life. Because when you're married, you're supposed to be married for a lifetime. Some people take marriage so like it's nothing. And I don't necessarily see marriage like that. So I'm not rushing to be married because my thoughts on marriage is it's permanent. Bitch, till death do us part. So if it ain't going to be till death do us part, 
then we don't need to even uh, talk about that. I don't even need to be thinking about that. You know what I'm saying? Right now, I be chilling. I, I go on my dates. I have my small relationships. They work out the way they work out. I come on here and I tell y'all whatever. And I move on. And that's that. Um, I had to say to the person that there's no limit on love or, or, or marriage. If I didn't get married until I was 50 years old, that would be fine in a sense as long as it's not somebody I'm with right now and then they wait till I'm 50 to marry me. No, I, I wouldn't be accepting of that. Um, I wouldn't be with somebody 15, 20 years and waiting for them to marry me. No, at that point, nigga, after five, six, seven years, you don't know you want to marry me. And to some people, that's a lot. To me, I could I could do fi a five-year relationship. To some people, that's unbelievable that a woman would stay with a man for five years before she gets married. But in my opinion, if I have to spend the rest of my life with somebody and their bad habits and their past traumas and their financial situation and... I need to know, can I do it? Because I will be with somebody and even if y'all see me and that person's dynamic or y'all hear me talking about, oh, I like this person or they're sexy or I'm dating them and everything sounds good. Of course, that's what people do. I'm not going to get on this camera and be talking shit about everything and every little thing or every little situation that I get into with somebody I'm dealing with. I'm not going to throw them under the bus like that. Now, when it's over and I feel like making a story time, then so be it. But... The fact is that everything is not peaches and cream. I could sit here and play house for a little bit. I make sure that I keep my son as separated from whoever I'm dealing with as possible. They might get a high from my son or be introduced here and there. But it, it, that's the extent of it to, you know, what I'm, is what I'm saying. But me, I always find it interesting that I, the, the, what I see, how can I say? I have had no real life personal experiences with a woman who has been married who is not miserable or does not appear to be miserable. And I'm not trying to offend nobody that I know that is married, but quite honestly speaking, the women that I know are fucking miserable. They've let themselves go they don't do shit for themselves. They, everything is their children and their man. And quite frankly, if you believe in the Bible, then so be it. That's the route that you choose to take. So that's how you choose to conduct yourself in a marriage, serving, serving, serving. But to me, I don't ever want to lose myself. And if being married means that I have to lose myself, then I'm not with it. And that appears to be the example that I've been getting from my surroundings, from a little girl. You understand what I'm saying? And that's fucked up, but that's my reality. So with that in conjunction of what my experience has been with dating, I don't, I don't ever, ever, ever force the idea of marriage with anybody that I'm with because if you think that I'm going to be married and be with them for the rest of my life and then they're going to trade me in for a newer version of me or they're going to be cheating on me and I got to tolerate that because we got bills together we got kids together or whatever the situation is i cannot i'm not built for it <laughs> i am not built for it i'm not i'm not if we can't be together and if we decide to have kids and we raise our kids to be you know respectable human beings civilized human beings do what we do and we can't travel together and we we can't still have that friendship and just be happy and be chill without the pressures of being married. I don't want it. I don't fucking want it. You need to be dating me while we're married. And if you can't do that, then I know everything ain't gonna be peaches and cream. I know that for a fact. But I'm just not in the in the, in the business of making that decision and then having to sacrifice my happiness. For all that, I can continue dating and having fun and getting, uh, uh, going on different dates and having different se sexual experiences that I add to fun. <laughs> I mean, that sounds crazy. I don't know if I'm explaining myself in a, in, a, in a right way. And I don't even mean on some whole shit. I just mean on some, why would I stay with the same dick for the rest of my life that's not making me fucking happy? If I'm going to stay with the same dick, you better be making me happy just like I better be making you happy. 
and I better go out my way to make you happy, and you better go out your way to make me happy. Point blank, period. Now, nobody's in control of your happiness. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying some people just feel like I'm married to them. They ain't going nowhere, so I, I no longer have to do this or no longer. No, I'm not with the shits. I'm not. Because I know that I'm the type to go above and beyond for somebody. And if I can't get that in return, we just dating for now. Period. I had my son when I had him. And I had my pregnancy experiences, like one before him and, and, and the, the ones that I did have after I had my son. But I knew enough to know that I do not want no lifelong commitment with nobody else that I'm not going to be with. Y'all can call it paranoid. Y'all can call it having trust issues or whatever you want to call it. But honestly speaking, the way some of these married men conduct themselves, in my head, I'm like, it could not be me. <laughs> it can't. It can't. It, I would never. I hear all types of outside babies and I'm like, yo, what's good? But you could be by yourself. You could pop that pussy for other niggas, have fun, travel, live your life, wear what you want, do what you want, move how you want. Why would you be in a miserable ass marriage? It's wild to me. I'm not doing it. I want to be able to pick up and leave when the fuck I feel like it. You know what I'm saying? So I just, uh, like I said, I want to be married. But I want to be married the way I want to be married. I don't want to be married in the sense that no matter what happens or what the person does to you, that you have to stay with them. No. No the fuck I don't. No the fuck I don't. So there goes that. Um... And when it comes to kids, oh, no, oh, and when it comes to kids, if you're wondering, I would like a little girl. I will be great with a little girl. I find little girls to be so amusing. <laughs> I would love a little girl. My whole thing is. I do not want to have a child with someone who has the mindset of, oh, you're the mother, so you have to do everything and I just provide. No, I need somebody who is going to be willing to be just as much as a parent as I am going to be, if not even more. Because you have some people that feel as though because you're the mother that you're supposed to do everything and then the father is it's option it's an optional thing. No the fuck is not. No the fuck is not. I don't play with my son's father. And my son's father never been the type to even fucking play himself like that. So I, I can't even really say that. But um I don't play that shit. Go to your father. <laughs> Word up. He's just as much as your parent as I am your parent. The fuck? I ain't gonna be locked down like I had that baby by myself. Are you dumb? No deadbeats over here. Yeah, so, um... There goes that. I know I sound selfish, but I think that saves me more of the heartache that I've already experienced in life as a 32-year-old woman. I don't want to be married in a loveless marriage. And I know I shouldn't be thinking like that. There's plenty of people out there that's married and happy and you can have a healthy marriage and, you know, whatever. You're going to go through your ups and downs. I understand that that exists. But in this day and age with people being so easily attainable to each other and nobody having a real sense of loyalty, 
I cannot picture myself being married and having to doubt whether my partner is loyal to me or willing to stick with me during thick and thin if my appearance changes or health issues or whatever the situation is. I just, I can't, I wouldn't be able to, I, I have to deal with somebody who's authentic, genuine. You know what I'm saying? So, um, right now I'm chilling. Okay. Mr. Crush is a complete, I'm not going to say complete gentleman, because I noticed something about him that I do not like. He has wandering eyes. Um, <laughs> and I don't say nothing, but he's like one of the men that if they, if he sees an attractive woman is, he can't even, it's like, damn, yeah, this, you know, and I don't like that turns me off. Um. Is I understand that men are going to look, but in the manner that he does it, I find it to be disrespectful because it's a little obvious. But I don't know if he knows how obvious he's making it. Because some people are so used to doing what they do that when they do get into a relationship or they're dealing with somebody, their old habits are hard to break. And then when, if you try to say something to them, it's like, oh, I am who I am and I'm a man and uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's all cool. But it's you have to have a level of, oh! Anyway, you have to have a level of respect. But besides that, um, pet peeve, I don't have any complaints about him. He's very gentleman-like. He is, he has the ability to provide. He's not, you know, I don't have no other complaints. But that's one thing that I did notice about him. You see another bitch with a fat ass? His nephew's like, Okay, calm down. Relax. I didn't say anything to him about it. But, um, yeah. He had said to me one day, we had a, a little back and forth about some, some bullshit. We, me and him don't argue like that. Uh, we'll get into like a small back and forth and then it'll just get quiet and get awkward and then one of us will just start talking and then we leave it alone. But he had said to me, oh, I've been this way for 40 years. And people say that and the, that, the only thing that bothers me about that is you're using what, you're normally, what, what you normally do as an excuse to be either disrespectful or inconsiderate and I don't like that I can be very nasty with my mouth that does not mean because I'm nasty with my mouth that when I speak nasty to you that you have to accept that no I have to be able to work on myself I have to be able to say yeah I usually act this way or behave this way but I do care about this person's feelings so let me try to be a little softer with my words so when he said that I, I wasn't really feeling that I was just like okay you was like that for 40 years this is the 40th year. Something got to give. <laughs> um, but further than that, we, we spend damn near every night with each other. Damn near every night. Um, so, that's that. We just spend a lot of time. Morning, afternoon, night, whatever. Days off. He's here. He got his own shit. He don't have to be here. He don't have to spend time with me. He could be anywhere in the world. Trust me. Um, for what I know about him. But he's here. So um, that in itself uh, speaks values. I care about him. Um, and I just need to work out my own mental... Um, things that I have in my head because of the person that I previously dealt with. I don't normally push, put people in 
a category and say this person is just like this person simply because they are male or whatever, whatever. But that experience was so bad that I think that I need, I still need to let some of those things go. Even though I went through my detox or whatever, when you meet somebody else and then they, they do something that's similar or whatever, your mind automatically naturally goes to your past experience and you, you start doing things in your head like, okay, is, does this mean that? You know, you overthink. Women overthink all the time. Um, so, and he's, did, he's done the same thing to me. We had a conversation about that. Um, so, I think for the most part, we good. I really like him. I really care for him. And I'm just going with the flow. It's no pressure. It's no pressure. I know one thing. I better not ever see him with no other bitch. If I saw him walking in the street with another woman... It's on sight. <laughs> no pressure though. You, you feel me? The fuck you looking at this shit for? You got this crackhead bitch with you. Yeah, so. I mean, no pressure. Um, But what the fuck you think is going on? That's just me talking shit. I think it's very funny. As y'all seen, he's very attractive. Um, he's very intelligent. And I'm only saying that because when you first meet somebody and you assume that they this way or one way, I didn't think that he was dumb. But I didn't think that he had uh, more depth to him. I just thought it was like this superficial thing. Like, you know, this look at me type of guy. But he's not like that at all. He's, he's very fucking chill. Very chill. Um, yeah, we just be vibing out. This morning we had got into it. Not big, big, but it, it got a little heated because of a certain topic, right? So I got really quiet and awkward and my normal response to that is for it to stay quiet and awkward. <laughs> that's it. That That's literally how I handle that. I won't say shit. I won't try to... But I was like, you know what? It was like 10 minutes and I could tell that he was uneasy. Even though, you know, whatever. I don't want to get into detail. I just went up to him gave him a kiss. I ain't want him feeling away, especially when you're in somebody else's house and then it gets awkward. I know people's first thought is like, I ain't got to be here, bitch. I'm, I'm going. <laughs> but I didn't want him to feel that way. I don't ever want him to feel out of place or, you know, whatever. So I just tried to smooth it over. We was all right after that. Well, sometimes you have to check people because people will say say something to you and they think that it's okay to speak to you a certain way or, or say certain stuff to you and you have to literally inform people especially when you don't know somebody for a long period of time we just we, we getting to know each other in in and out or turn offs and turn ons or you know whatever what pushes each other's button so there's gonna be times like that where something like that happens and we just gotta get through it i guess but um I think my issue is that when I have a problem, I don't tell the person that I have a problem. I won't say nothing. My my mood would change, but you won't necessarily know what's wrong. But that happens because say everything is going good, I'll think of something that they did the day before and then my mood just switch and then I'll just be looking at them like, all right, all right, motherfucker. <laughs> You know, just a thought, right? You, some, some shit they did three days ago. You like, are you thinking about it? And everything is good in the moment, but you thinking about that shit from three days ago. And you like, you know what? That shit made me fucking mad. And now you mad. You you retroactive mad. So I'm trying to get out of the habit of doing that. But anyway... The shit chat wasn't about shit. Like I said, I'm hungry. I'm fucking starving. And I might just eat some soup. 
What time is it? I got an hour and a half left before I clock out from work. So. Hope y'all enjoyed this video. I don't know. I've either offended you or entertained you or both. <sighs> Welcome to the Boom Crew. So, let me get off this motherfucking phone and finish watching my Jamaican cooking videos because I'm telling y'all, I'm about to be just faking. Hopefully, I could do a cooking video where I get the good angles, like how people do when they're making cooking videos and, and, and it be edited really nice. That's what I want. So, once I get all my ingredients and stuff, I'm going to either do the oxtail or the curry chicken first. And I'm going to do it and then, um, excuse me, I'm going to spin it. Calm down. <laughs> thinking about that food <laughs> I'm gonna do it and then I'm going to get Mr. Crush's reaction because guess what y'all I know I said I don't like Jamaican men but um he's Jamaican <laughs> I'm full of shit if you don't know that by now what the fuck what have you been doing what videos have you been watching <laughs> bye <laughs>